It's time now for the Kill the Can podcast. I'm pumped that that we are finally able to kind of pull this together. I know it's been a couple weeks since we've been chatting. You you had reached out um, to kind of you know with with an idea for the podcast. So I'm I'm thrilled. Um, for those that don't know, I'm joined by Kramer on the forums or on the on the Discord. Um, can you can you kind of introduce yourself and give us a little bit of kind of background? Tell us about your quit and kind of how you how you how you came to be in uh, on a podcast with me in in March of 2024. Absolutely, I love to, and you know, thanks for having me. I'm, yeah, you're. Right. I'm glad we pulled this together. So, um, I, I'm Massachusetts based. Um, I've been uh, with KTC approaching 10 years. That's amazing. And, um, I'm an attorney by trade and I've had my own practice for, for quite some time. Um, we've been married since 2001 and um, you know, I have three boys, 21, 18 and 15. And my wife and I get to navigate all the challenges that three boys uh, present to us, especially as they age and get older. Um. My quit, I personally think is really interesting. You know, the, there were how many quits on on our, our site? There are many like it, but this one's mine. So that's why I think it's interesting kind of a thing. Um, I didn't start chewing till late in the game. I actually, um, I have an older brother who um, is bipolar and self-treated, which meant I grew up in a house that had a, you know, um, drug using felon. And the message that sent to me was don't ingest anything in your body. And in high school, I was in, you know, dare and all those things that you would do. And my body was my temple because I also was a, a hockey player and was going to do that in college. But that was kind of my mentality. So I kind of had one of those Seinfeld moments, serenity now, insanity later yep. reactions. So when I got to college, I made up for those four years of not being a normal high school student. And um, that's when that's when dip entered my life because everyone on the hockey team did it. And I finally was like, hey, I'm doing all this other stuff. Let's do this. And then I was immediately hooked. Okay. For all the reasons we were all immediately hooked. I'm not going to romanticize it here other than to say yeah. I was hooked. So, then, so did yeah. you, so was, was that literally your first, like you had not smoked or dipped or anything up until college? Absolutely nothing. And wow. almost night one, I ingested everything I had avoided because um, we didn't have fraternities at my college, but we had a house where most of the hockey players lived and the recruits, the other recruits and I got called to the hockey house and okay. it was, here's the night, drink this, chew this. Smoking wasn't an option for us. There were no drugs on the sure. table, but it was, here's chew, here's booze. Let's go to work. How, kind of how do, you, do you remember like, how bad that fucked you up that first night to have like all of those, you know what I mean? Like b between oh, yeah. like, I can't, I can't even fathom. Cause I remember very vividly the first dip that I took and you know, you get this kind of wicked head buzz the first time you have nicotine. Yep. I can't even fathom throwing on top of that. Somebody without a tolerance to any sort of alcohol or anything like that. I would imagine like even a couple beers would have kind of probably knocked you on your ass at that point. Yes, had yeah. they given us beer. Right, right. They gave right. us some form of mezcal tequila thing that until December, I couldn't even smell that kind of alcohol. I would get my hair would raise from that night. And then finally- December of, December of this year. Oh, yes. So like from wow. my freshman year in college, which was 1992, 93, I forget exactly where in the year it yeah. was. Um, after that night, I could not even smell like tequila or mezcal or those flavors of things. And then I was with a, um, my wife and I were some couples and they said, you got to try this margarita. It's really good. I'm like, I don't know. My wife's like, see what happens. And it was, it was okay. It worked. Okay. It worked. But yeah, for all that time. So yes, um, w w what I remember about that night was the next morning. Okay. And it wasn't so much like, oh, I have a headache. It was where my friend and I were located. We woke up. So the school we went to had was on a hill and had a lot of stairs. And if you kind of laid out on a map, the house we were at, where our dorm was, but where we woke up, one made no sense. But more okay. importantly, we woke up kind of on a riser halfway up the hill. So we had made our way half up, stopped, and then obviously just fell asleep. 
Um, lucky it's the backside of campus, so not a lot of people would use those stairs. So people were like tripping over us because that could have been a whole other thing, right? So, you know, sure. but, uh, that's what I remember most about that. Um, but to your point, yeah, I mean, I remember chewing initially be, without alcohol in me in the room, just spinning around like you're on a carousel. Yeah. Uh, not liking it, but yet wanting to do this more. Like, sure. Go figure, right? Sure. So, so you, so you come to, you come to nicotine late, later in life. Um, how long did you chew then from that point? Yeah. Um, I chewed from like so my freshman year in college um, and I quit in 2014. Okay. So call it, uh, you said so 92, 1993 ish to 2014 yeah. ish. Okay. Um, okay. But I, I changed and this is what I say. Like, I feel like mine's a little you know, different than maybe some other folks here, I changed. So I used to be outright, I'd chew whenever, it didn't matter. You know, when I was going through law school, I would chew when I was studying, I'd chew at the bars. When I met my wife, we were dating, she knew I chewed. But at some point, I started to pretend to quit. And I say it that way because I had no intentions of quitting, but I felt like I had to for our relationship. Okay. So I became a, as we say in Massachusetts, a ninja dipper. And, and I, okay. I hit it, right? So my lifestyle around chewing. So at this point, we're not getting the buzz. It's more the, the habit of chewing. And so my lifestyle changed. And um, to jump ahead, to go backwards, kind of a thing, I later found out my wife knew I was doing it the whole time. But I thought okay. I was being super selfie, right? Because there would be evidence somewhere that I didn't clean up or or what have you. Um. But to kind of thrust into the problem, what led me to want to quit. So to go from pretending to quit to say, okay, now I really have to do this. Um, two things kind of happened. Ninja dipping, thinking I'm, you know, oh, I'm quitting, hun. I actually had to get um, surgery to build up my gums. So the one where they harvest tissue from oh, your, wow. okay. your mouth. Yeah. And that might say to most people, maybe I should stop. I had the mentality of, I just bought 10 more years of chewing. But wow. that did plant a seed. It wasn't an immediate thing, so I had to germinate and grow. So that when the second thing happened, combined, it was like, okay, for health and for this. So if that was the seed, what really happened was this. Because I was, I was hiding it, that meant I was chewing late at night. Mm -hmm. Which meant I wasn't taking care of myself. Which meant I wasn't functioning in the morning. So with, you know, younger children, it was falling to just my wife and I was not helpful. And she resented that. And she knew why, didn't tell me, but resented it. Okay. It also caused a huge breach of trust because she knew I was being dishonest with her. And when I would get caught, like with evidence, I wouldn't be forthright about it. I would be further dishonest about it. I wouldn't make up these random stories, but I would not own what I did. I would try and talk around it, ignore it, pretend it was from old or whatever. I, I, anything, anything, but yeah, you're right. I do it. And sometimes I just ignore what she was saying, walk away. Okay. So it, it hit, go, you going to say something? Or you I, no, I was going to say, so would, would you, so, so two things. One, yeah. um, you said that you kind of transitioned into being a ninja dipper when you, when you were pretending to quit. Yep. Then you had this, this incident, a medical incident where it was the seed of an actual quit. Um, but you, you mentioned something, you said that your wife knew the whole time. So, yeah. and, and she, I'm, I'm curious, have you ever had a conversation with her about why she um, didn't tell you that she knew that you were still using? And again, this is not, this is not on her. I'm just curious. Have you ever yes. had that conversation? Um we have, you know, we did have to unpack that at some point. Yeah. Um, and um, to own it, um, the time she would try and bring it up, I was not a willing participant. I would not. Okay. I would choose to disengage from that conversation somehow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Would you, would you, would you like, and I don't, and I'm not saying this to make light of it, would you go like into lawyer mode and like, and <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and oh, yeah. kind of not talk circles, but like talk circles around the, the conversation. 
I would not only have a lawyer mode defense, I would have a complete ignore defense where she would talk and I would just walk away and not say anything. So it was one of those two things okay. in the lawyer mode. Um, and I don't know if, the, if, if I would say this is a separate one or just a part of the lawyer mode, but another model of it would be I would try and turn the conversation and, and just deflect and distract and talk about something else. Like, okay. oh, you want to talk about this? Well, let's talk about this thing over here. So we don't have to talk about this. Right. But yeah, I, I would completely do those things. And, okay. Uh, which the end result was she just stopped talking about it and held that resentment. Sure. Okay. All right. So we get to January right of 20 um 2014 is it 2014 it's got to be because i'm may of i'm may of 15 no, okay january of what point is we get to january yeah okay right C crisis moment happens it is readily apparent to me my marriage is almost to the point of complete and utter failure because and, and i'm not going to tell you chewing was the main thing but it was a pretty good symptom of what was going on. It was, sure. there was a lack of trust. We also were not on the same page. We were not together. It was a lack of trust. There was in, in that resentment and just, we had fallen apart. And so, um, yeah, I had to sit there and, and kind of have that proverbial look in the mirror and say, what am I going to do here? And um, obviously I decided to let's, let's, let's talk about what's happening and let's fix what we're doing. And here we are now, almost 10 years later, together and things are much better. And I took a lot of time to fix what was wrong inside of me. And um, she did the same. And then we came together and fixed each other. And part of that was me being honest about how I was, you know, chewing, disengaging from her, things like that. And then going out and seeing why I was doing that and trying to fix that. That is, first of all, that is awesome. And I'm glad that there is a, uh, a happy end uh, or a happy kind of trajectory. I won't say an end a trajectory to that story. Um, you know, as you know, so I, I've been married 25 years as well. I married my high school sweetheart. Right. So it's like, as you know, full well, you know, marriage is not an easy thing to begin with. Right. Um, especially when you throw three boys on top of that, especially when there are kind of other issues. Um, and, and so, so let me, so like, what, um, was there one thing, you know, we, we, I talk about the decision to quit dipping. Right. Yep. And it sounds like, it sounds like you had this seed with the, with the, with the medical thing. And then it was, was there one kind of specific thing that you've been able to, in your mind, say, this is the, like, this was the day, this was the moment. Was there one specific fight or conversation or something that like made you say, oh, okay, I'm, here's my decision. I'm actually done. And then now, now that I've made the decision, I'm going to put all the work in necessary to make that decision come to fruition. Absolutely. And now my timeline's clarified. It was Columbus Day weekend. It was actually Columbus Day itself of 2014. Okay. We were to go out to dinner with some family and Carrie grabbed me and said, listen, I'm not going with you. And I'm like, what? And it was, I, I can't take this anymore. And so okay. she, she confronted me and said, this is not working. We're not doing a good job. Um, I need to think about some things. So I remember going out to dinner that night with the boys and the rest of the family. And then that night she said, and by the way, you're not sleeping in this room anymore. Okay. And I remember being in the basement that very night deciding I need to do something about my life. Okay. Okay. Now it took me from that's October until January to find KTC to actually say, I'm going to quit, but I had decided then I'm doing this. And I tried to really do it without support unsuccessfully. Sure. Okay. Right? But um, that was it. Columbus day of 2014. Did, did, um, did you share that decision with her in October and did, and was she supportive of that? decision at that point? I mean, obviously we should be supportive of it, but like, was she, was she on board? Did she believe you? Did you like, what is that? What does that journey come like when you, when you've come from a, a point of, um, quote unquote dishonesty, right? Like, did it, did it take her a while to 
um, to be, to believe, to trust? Like how, what, what, what was that timeline like? It absolutely did. Yeah. Um, that night I actually wrote her a letter. Partial confession. Yeah. Like I think she knew, but it was coming from me. Yes. Sure. I've chosen to live my, you know, whatever I, I did this, I did this, I hid this and I lied about this. Yes. So partial confession, but partial promise to do better. Okay. And, uh, an invitation to want to try and do better with you. Okay. Um, she was not in a position to really accept it. She was happy to see it, but it took us a, a couple of weeks till we could be like, okay, let's, let's see what we want to do here. And we, and we found a marriage counselor that we really liked and then started down that journey together. Okay. With a marriage counselor. Now, some other interesting thing kind of happened here along the way. The marriage counselor said to me, you know, I have this men's group that I think you would be awesome in. And we happen to have a spot. We meet every Monday night for two hours. And you just talk if you want to talk. You listen if you want to listen. You process. And and I, as the therapist, kind of guide it. But I don't really give therapy, but I might give advice. So I joined this thing. And it was the most powerful tool I ever found in my kind of journey to improve myself. And it's sitting in a room with nine guys from all walks of life that got there for all different reasons. And you literally will take time if you need it or don't take time if you don't. And it became like a practice area, like a safe place to practice, to fix your things. Um, that therapist died right around the end of, you know, when they started um, opening things up after COVID. Okay. We still meet on Zoom Do you? without him. Wow. Now, it's not a therapeutic group anymore. So you don't have a therapist. It's more sure. a support group, but we meet every Tuesday night without him. That's all. Well, um, so, so first of all, um, I have to, I have to commend you on, um, taking those steps because there's, there's a lot of people that wouldn't have taken those steps. Um, that is awesome that, that you were able to find, like find that group that has been yeah. super successful to you. Um, you know, I think I I've done a lot of research or I've done a lot of, I won't call it research. I've done a lot of reading since the pandemic around how connections, you know, the, you know, we just, because of the social distancing, because of this, you know, this, that, and the other thing connections and like face-to-face -face conversations and just like engagement with people has gone so far down and it's led to, you know, arguably all sorts of depression and all sorts of alcoholism and all sorts, like all of these other things. And so, and I, I, again, I recognize that that's not why you found this group, but the fact that you've got that outlet that, that has persisted through the pandemic and, and now very clearly it sounds like is a group of very good close friends right or at the very least confidants that you continue to meet that, that's that's just real that's that's really cool that's really special it's, um yeah it is and there was one significant night there that i credit I, I don't remember the exact night or where it was in my journey but it was earlier sean i remember that night you know i was talking and i thought i could fold laundry out of my i could fold laundry to get myself out of this problem meaning if i just was okay. a good boy and did housework and woke up on time and, and 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 i was still kind of will i was willing to improve myself but i was superficial i don't know for yep. lack of a better word to to do it and i remember you know the, the the guys in the group looking at me going listen you know you have work to do like there's something going on inside of you that you need to address fix att attend to right and you got to really look inside yourself and figure out, you know, why did you do these things? What's going on? And they said, but most importantly, and this is what clicked for me. And it was, it was, it was the light bulb went off when this happened. And it was, you have to be willing to do this work for yourself, not for an outcome. You can't do this work because you want to save your marriage. You can't do this work because you want to, you know, make sure you're a good dad. You can't, you have to do this work because you want to be the best person you can be. Yep. Your marriage might salvage because of it. You know, you, you might have a really good relationship with your boys or your father, or, but you have to do the work for you. Mm -hmm. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. But it set me on the right path to do the right journey. I remember early on when things were still touch and go and I was doing this. I remember my wife telling me in therapy, 
She can see that I'm working on myself. She can see me improving. She can see me not only going back to the person she was when she met me, but being, becoming, I was changing. I was going to be a different person. And she's like, and I love this person. And it'll be such a shame. I'll be so sad if our, our relationship is not salvageable because I want to be with this person. Sure. And I just remember all that, but that was it. It was like, yeah, I, I had to work on this for me and only me. And then bring myself back to the world and see what happens. I gotcha. So, so where does, where, where does kill the can fit into this? Yep. Does it, does it conflict with this? Does it augment this? Does it, is it synonymous? Like where, where how does, how does that kind of fit in yeah. together? What's the puzzle pieces? Um, kill the can hundred percent augmented this journey and what I was doing, because as I was doing this work from, you know, October ish, I was wanting to quit, but unable to fall starts, you know, yep. I was honest about it. I'd say, Hey, listen, I chewed last time. Sorry. I couldn't help myself, but I was honest about it. And then, um, I knew I needed help. And so I started looking around and initially I kind of went from, Oh, I'll, I'll start putting on, you know, the fake stuff in. Yep. And okay, fine. But I still realized I just needed more help, more help. And I found Kill the Can researching fake tobacco, you know, fake dip stuff. There was one of the places I went to had an ad. Oh, what's this? Yep. And when I found it, I was like, oh, this might be what I need. And it augmented things because it gave me the path. Like the, the accountability was good. I needed accountability, but it was the brotherhood that did it. Okay. It was similar to my men's group, like kind of thing. It's like, here's a group of people doing what I'm doing. Similar struggles. I have a reach out and someone will know what I'm struggling with at that moment. Right. And I can also be a reach out for somebody else. So it's like that dual accountability, but it was that brotherhood that did it. And if it was just post a number, see you later, it wouldn't have worked. Okay. Um, okay. And to be fair and, you know, the only group that matters to me is May of 2015, the Misfits. And if you yep. if you go look, we still have a large amount of quitters with us. Where I think if you look at groups around the same time of us, you'll see people drop off and mm -hmm. the groups go down. We have a strong core. We also have some folks that quit at different times and say, we want to quit with you as if we're, we were sure. May 15 too. Yep. And um, I think that's a testament to the bonds we made. And that's what I needed. And that was a complete compliment to the other journey I was taking. Sure. Do, do you have any insight or any thoughts about um, what it is that might make that May group different than, you know, June, July, than other groups around you that where you do see that, that fall off? I, I have an idea. Um, I don't know if this is true or not. You can tell me if you think it's true, but my idea is this. Um, there was another group that was coming in to give us support and not support. And it was because we had this one quitter who would fall off the wagon and come back on and retread, but wouldn't follow the retread rules. And there was another month right around us. Maybe it was a little early us that would come in to defend this guy. Okay. And we had a little war. Okay. And it was like the May 15 folks and our supporters were like, what are you doing? Get out of here. And, you know, some of those folks have now gone out of our site somewhere else. But mm -hmm. I think it was that antagonistic relationship that bonded us okay. around this retread. And we're like, this guy's got to go. Like, he's not following the rules. He's not doing this. And then people come, you can't kick him out. And to me, that's what it was. Okay. Okay. Um, no, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, then I think there was a second time that was early on in our quit. Then I think what happened later on in our quit was one of our one of our badass quitters passed away. Okay. And I feel like that it was and it was right around a time where people might have said, Hey, maybe I'll cycle out of this now. It's been two thousand days, I'm good, kind of a thing. And right. he passed away. And now we have him as an eternal quitter on our role. And I yep. feel like that kind of rebonded us and said, Ah, let's stick around for him. Okay. Now that's yeah, it, it's um you know, lo losing, losing quitters. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's obviously always hard. It's, it's harder still when you've got somebody that's in your group that you went through, you know, went through that battle with, you know, the day one through 10 through a hundred or what have you. 
Um, you know, we, you know, as a site, we just lost Fran pro Franny. I was very, very close to him. He wasn't in my group, but he was the, he was the two groups behind me. Um, and so, yeah, that one, I mean, they all hurt, but that one, that one hurt, you know, really, really bad for me. Um, so I, yeah, I can get, I can totally understand why that would kind of reinvigorate for lack of a better term and, and rebond a, a group, especially right. one like yours that was already really close to begin with. I could, yeah, I could totally see that. And then I think, you know, for, for new groups that are forming out there, the glue that tied all that together is we shared ourselves. We didn't just, mm-hmm. post music. we celebrated good things. I mean, even today I celebrated good. I went, we have a, a, a text chat and I went and said, Hey, this thing happened. And yeah. just the night, one of our friends popped in and said, I'm going through a really hard time. And yeah. so I think because we shared stuff and got to know each other, that also helped. And that's for the newer groups. That's vital. Like you know, reach out, talk to each other on the phone, you know, share yeah. discord stories that, you know, you want to celebrate going to your group. Hey, this awesome thing happened. Hey, this thing happened. I'm struggling. Right. Get the help celebrate the success. It's awesome. Yeah, no, I, th- I, th- I think that's really important. I, and I think you're right. I think, you know, th- that, that accountability and posting role obviously is kind of paramount to what we do, but I would agree with you. I mean, the, the relationships, that I have developed over the years at kill the can, you know, these are some of my best friends and whether I've met them face to face or not, right. To your point, you, you share these things. You, I mean, at this point, I mean, you know, I've, I've shared births, I've shared marriages, I've shared new jobs, I've shared, you know, struggles, all all sorts of stuff. And I I would agree. All it does is it, um, yeah, it it does. It absolutely bonds you together. Um, so I, I wanted to ask you, you would, when, when we, when you reached out originally to talk about this podcast, you had a really interesting, a really interesting take on, and it was around perspective. So can, yeah. can you kind of talk to me about, uh, and, and again, you and I chatted for a few minutes, but I, I'll, I'll just be quiet. Can you kind of lay out <laughs> your, your, your perspective theory, I guess, for lack of a better term? Yeah. And I think it's really important for this, that you did what you just didn't have to go through the history because, you know, obviously me quitting was significant to my relationship, repair with my wife and all these things. So recently celebrated my 3,300th day. And um, that morning I had kind of gone in the kitchen, hey, milestone day today, 3,300th. Expecting all kinds of adulations and hugs and celebration. And my wife kind of said, you know, like you can stop telling me about these things. And I was floored. I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, every time you tell me about these milestones, it takes me back in time to when I didn't like you, when I was giving you middle fingers behind your back. I don't need to be reminded of that. I'm excited you stopped chewing tobacco, for all, but I don't need to hear it's another hundred because I feel like I'm celebrating how we we used to treat each other, how our relationship was. I'm celebrating the negative things and it brings me back there. And that just knocked me down. It just did. I was just yeah. like, shit, like what? Like, I didn't know what to, I didn't know how to react at first. You know what? It's it, it's funny. The, 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 you and I chatted, I don't know, it was a couple of weeks ago and, and you kind of told me some of this and I, and I remember I was in the car when we were having that conversation and I remember kind of being a little bit dumbfounded. And, and even as you tell me that again, I'm having a very similar reaction and it's not, it's not a reaction of, um, she's wrong. It's actually a reaction of, Oh my God. Like it's a, it's a realization that she's correct. You know what I mean? Like, and it's, and it's just not a perspective that I've ever been able to wrap my head around for two reasons. One, because like you, I'm in the, I'm in the mindset of a quitter and of celebrating these days and being really, really excited about a 3,300, which is amazing by the way. Um, but the other reason that I, uh, that that is such a foreign concept to me is my wife, when I quit had a very different reaction, right? She was, she was very, uh, very happy and, and still to this day, like celebrates my, my milestones with me. And again, it's, that's not to say that either of our wives or right or wrong, right. It, it, it's, it's right. just, it was, it was a very foreign response to me. And so I, it, it's really, it's really fascinating to me that your wife, a would 
be comfortable enough now with you to share with you that it triggers her and Hey, like, because, you know, I'm sure she, she probably thinks about that and she's like, Oh, well shit. Like I'm going to, he, he's coming to me with something that is clearly very special to him, but it really kind of bothers me. And so I think I, I give her a lot of credit for, for telling you that, right. For being like, Hey, look, like for being honest with her, with, with you. And at the same time, like now that I think about it from her frame of reference, I get it. Like I can understand why that would be really triggering for her. Life was miserable. I don't want to go back there. Yeah. I don't want to achieve you getting out of your thing. But um, so first of all, thank you for seeing that. Cause that point you are making is, is, is a testament to the work we did that. Yes. Our relationship is to the point of, we can say things to each other without worrying about upsetting the other one. Cause we know we've created a safe place to communicate with each other. Yeah. And that's vital. The communication is, is there. But um, I've been thinking about it since we spoke. And, you know, the question I asked for you is, when you quit, did you hide your chewing tobacco habit? Uh, when when I quit or pr- prior to? Because your wife celebrates your achievements with you. She did. Right? Yeah, yeah. Did, um, you, did you lie about your habit? Did you hide it? Did you so um, distrust with it? I... I, I was certainly not a ninja by any stretch, um, but I would, I guess I would go out of my way to not, not like, not hide, but, you know, I'd go to the bathroom or I'd go, you know, Hey, I'll, I'll run to the store and I'll get milk or, Oh, we need eggs. I'll go grab, you know, Hey, we got a dozen eggs, but I'll go grab another dozen. Just, you know, like that kind of stuff. Um, so, so I wouldn't, again, I wasn't a ninja, and, and my wife knew full well that I was dipping. I mean, it was, it was not a question of it, whether or not I was using or not. Um, I think she, she, I guess now that I think back on it, I guess we probably both got to the point where it was not worth the fight to, to fight about it. So we would kind of not, not that we were ignoring it, but we just wouldn't address it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I got, does that answer your question? I 100% does, because yeah. I think what we can do is now completely contrast my situation. Yeah. Right? I 100% tried to hide it, not in the way of, I'll go to the bathroom and choose so you don't see me doing it kind of thing. Like, I actively misled her. Right? Okay. Um, I So, like, I get it. Like, I'll, I'll go to the store. Well, for me, it'd be like, I'm taking the kids to the park. I'm like, see you later. And I right. wouldn't be part of that family situation. She'd resent that. Like, so I, the way I did it, it caused a lack of, a lack of trust, resentment. Like it, 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 it fractured a relationship because of what I did. Sure. So I think that's why there might be a difference. And don't get me wrong. She's very proud of the fact that I've stopped. She's happy for me. She's happy for us. She just does not want to. You know, it's just the fact she'd be like, I just, you tell me that my mind goes. Sure. I don't want my mind to go back there. So, all right. So let, so let me ask you this. Have you, so that was 30, uh, your, your most recent kind of, we'll call it hundred day milestone was 3,300 days, which is what a couple, couple weeks ago at this point, 47 days ago. Okay. So have, have you in your mind come up with a, 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 for lack of a better term, a plan, how, how are you going to handle 3,400? <laughs> um, a couple of different ways. Um, I guess it's a good time to introduce. I'm a giant fan of gratitude journal. Okay. Along the way, as I was going down this path, I found gratitude journaling and researched it and practice it and believe in the, the neuroscience behind it. Um, the particular tool I use is called a five minute journal. You know, the tool doesn't matter as long as you're doing it. Right. I like the five minute journal because it's kind of like Mad Libs. It's basically, it lays out with blank lines, like right here, you idiot. And it's going to literally take you five minutes. So, you know, yeah, I will continue to celebrate the milestones in my gratitude journal as I'm counting wins without a doubt. I will celebrate with, you know, in our, on the discard form, discord form. I'm thinking of inviting Carrie out just the two of us on a date and opening up a conversation. Okay. And not a, Hey, let's celebrate because I'm reaching 3,400, but I'm at another milestone and I love to let you talk about what it means to you 
and why, you know, like let's, let's reach this milestone from your perspective, mm -hmm. not, my, not my perspective. Okay. And see what happens. That's the current thought. I don't know if it's a good thought or not. Um, part of me says, I don't want to wait that long to revisit this. Sure. Part of me says that's kind of doing the same thing. Um, and honestly, as I'm talking it through, my mind says, why don't I just go up to her and say, Hey honey, what do you think about this? Sure. And just let her go. But sure. um, yeah, there has to be something and to celebrate it. I can celebrate it without telling her I'm okay with that. You know, put it in my journal. Yeah. You know, celebrating with, with my fellow badass quitters is, is good enough for me, but I do want to follow up with her in some manner and, and, and let her get off her chest. Sure. In a healthy way, what it means or, or why she feels this way or what do do you feel so it's so it sounds like you can understand why a celebration for you is a triggering event to her do you do you this is going to sound weird but i'm going to ask it anyways do you feel any sort of resentment that she is not um that that she gets triggered by that. Does that make sense? Like does she, it, like does it, makes does it bother sense. you? I'd lie to you if I said it didn't. Of okay. course it does. Yeah. Of course I want her to be like, "Yay, honey," and hug me. Of course I do. Yeah. So of course it bothers me. But because I can appreciate she might have a different understanding, I can sit with both of those emotions. Sure. And not yeah. One okay. And take the other. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I would love it to be the other way, wouldn't you? Yeah. Would yeah, you? right. That, that again. That's that's why I'm that's why I'm asking. Um, now, I, now I will say um, about the only time at this point that my wife, um, again, not that she needs to keep track of my days, so that's not what I'm saying. But like the only the only time that I'll even really kind of bring it up and share it with her is kind of like on my years, right? Like so every every year. Uh, so for me, it's July 24th. Um, you know, unfortunately. Um, July 24th has taken on a new, um, importance in my life. Uh, last July 24th, my father passed away. And so, so that date, um, will always now be again, synonymous, not only with my quit date, but it's, you know, this year it'll be the one year anniversary of the, of the year, my, or the day my father passed away. Um, but, um, so it'll be a, it'll be a, obviously a different sort of quote unquote celebration, right? It's going to be, it's right. going to be very different. Um, well, he, let, let me say this for if, if you ever need anybody else to celebrate your accomplishments with, give me a call, do. text me, you know, what I, I, I will, uh, because I don't have that baggage that your wife does. And I can, I can, be your biggest cheerleader in the world because th <laughs> those, those milestones are amazing. And I know how far you've, you, you, how, how much you battled and how far you've come. And I will celebrate with you to the moon every single time. You know, it, it is an amazing journey. And I, and I hope, and I, let's, I think this is important to pause for a second. Just, just mention, I hope, you know, the folks out there, you know, our other quitters don't just type or write a number down and move on. Like it is to me really important to pause, even if it's for a minute and just look back. Right. Um, and it's this, this technique called like, you know, do you measure the gap or do you measure the gain? Right. And I think the folks that, you know, are always looking at that horizon, looking for the gap and what they're trying to achieve, never get there. But the folks mm -hmm. that stop and look backwards at the gain they've made is really important, especially when you get into a, nine, 10, 11, 12 years quit. It's just kind of different. But if you can pause for a second and say, holy shit, I just made it another hundred days, another year, whatever the milestone you is, is important to you mm -hmm. and just appreciate what that means. And sometimes that means go back to a group where they're folks in the first 30 days. And I'll be honest, I'm guilty. I haven't done that for a while. I used to go back to the, to the, to the new May groups and post with them. Yep. And I stopped doing this. Like it, it worked so well for me. Let's stop doing it. Right. Sure. Right. But, you know, if, if you need that reminder of, of how far you came in these milestones, go back into one of those new groups, see the zombie funk, see the rage, 
see the I can see why this would work for you, but not for me routine, despite right. all the evidence right. to the contrary. Like right. right. You don't know what you're talking about, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Like um, and then all of a sudden that milestone, whether it's your first hundred, your thirty third hundred, your uh, how many years are you now? It'll be eighteen in in, your 18 in July. Year yeah. Suddenly yeah. takes on a different meeting and you appreciate that. That's important. Yeah. It, well, you know what it is, and and I think you know the other thing is it's like you, you get to the point where you, your your quit is on cruise control, for lack of a better term, yep. and and it, it, you can you can see where if you don't continue to post roll, if you don't continue to be engaged with your quit, however however you define that, right? You can see how somebody, even after 10, 15, 20 years in a moment of weakness at the bar with a buddy here, have a dip here, have a cigar. You know what I mean? Like you could see how it can happen j- literally just that easy. And, and I think it's the second thing you just said. That's the more likely culprit here, have a yeah. cigar. Right. It's all oh, I quit chewing tobacco. Like, right. Oh yeah. Um, and then kind of on the same lines of appreciating milestones and whatnot, as a crew to kind of bring my may my may folks back in you know to, to, and one of the strange things is I, just, I don't remember the number of days but mm-hmm. we had just had you know almost 10 years into our quit something like 379 consecutive days of every one of us you know 100% roll call and it was like it might have been like 400 it was some ridiculous That's awesome. number that was more than a year yeah That's and awesome. we were all in tune to it and I can tell you, there were times where something happened, like life lifed me, and my phone is 100% blowing up. Where are you? Because this thing is important. Right. And it's like, how do you get yourself out of cruise control? Have a group goal. Yeah, that's awesome. Control, that's really cool. Like, you know, and, and it fell off, and the guy that fell off was like, oh, we weren't mad at him. Like, you know, it was bound to go back to day one somehow. Right. Like, and he had it. Right. It was what it was. and But it's like, yeah. Cruise control sucks. What can you do to get out of it? Appreciate yeah. milestones is one. Have a group goal is a second. So, yeah. What one of the one of the things you know I mentioned the pandemic earlier. One of the things that really bummed me out about the pandemic is just the lack of quitter meets and the lack of being able to get together and those kind of things. And and I'm really looking forward to you know. And they've already started. You know, if if you see on the site, I always post the pictures, and I'm I'm really excited that that has started. You know, it started. They're starting to come back again. Yeah. You know, I know we're there's uh they're planning a, a Pennsylvania meet this summer. Um, so yeah, I'm just I'm really excited for that. And I and I can't tell younger quitters out there, younger in, in terms of days, how important those engagements can become. And to your point, I think you've made it abundantly clear how important the group dynamic for you has been. And it's and I think you're right. You and you mentioned it earlier. It's not just because you went in and you posted roll and you turned around and you left. It's that you shared all of these other victories and sometimes defeats with Absolutely. that group as well. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And so. um you gotta yeah, invest in others, they'll invest in you, that'll make you both invest in your quit, and it's a different animal. So dude, yeah. this has been awesome. I'm yeah, I'm so you. pumped that you reached out. I'm so happy that we were able to find time in, in our busy schedules to make it happen. Um, I would love to have you back on again to find out how that conversation with your wife goes. Absolutely. Um, If you ever want, I'm happy to have her on as well. That would be fun. Um, But, but yeah, but at the very least I want to hear how um, that next celebration goes and how that conversation goes. I'm, I'm uh, more than a little bit invested at this point to to find out how kind of how that story goes. You will, uh, you will definitely find out and we'll go from there. And I, I do, I really appreciate, you know, I didn't know in all these years we've never met. I don't even yeah. know that we've even really talked on the site. So I uh, appreciate your willingness to, to just say, yeah, I'm willing to talk. What do you got? So thank you. Awesome. Hey, thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Talk to you, brother. See ya. Bye. Bye. Join us again next time for another edition of the Kill the Can podcast.